Hey guys, Thomas Aarons here with Aarons Bassin. Today, it's jig fishing. Jig fishing 101 for, for beginners. Let's go. Today, we're gonna to talk about the why you wanna use a jig, how to really learn it, the equipment that you should use as a beginner, and then the type of baits. So the why, why fish a jig? First and foremost, the biggest reason, it gets you the bigger bite. I don't know why, I don't think anyone knows why. There's something about a jig that creates a core feeding response in bigger fish. You can have two friends throwing a shaky head and a drop shot and you come there with a jig and you have a higher probability of getting that bigger bite. So then what's, what's the hard thing about it? Why don't we just always throw it? What makes the jig such a hard bait for a lot of people to learn? It comes down to the bite. The bite with the jig is very, very subtle. Most of the time, when a fish takes that jig, it's gonna just inhale it. It uses its gill flaps and it sucks it in. And so a lot of times the tick you feel is actually him spitting the bait out, not always him inhaling it. And because that bite is very light, it takes time to really detect and learn what that feels like. And this was hard for me when I started fishing and I started fishing high school tournaments, learning the jig. And I went, like two years, I believe, without ever hooking one. And it was until we were on a family little um, pontoon boat and I brought that jig rod with me. And I remember I cast it under a dock and all I saw was a line move. And I just set the hook and it was like this little two pounder. It wasn't that big, but I didn't feel the bite. It was just weird. It felt different. And once that got in my head, I was able to really roll with it. But there were some things that I wish I did differently uh, when I was younger, that would have helped cut down my learning curve. And today, we're gonna talk about that. This right here is strictly jig fishing 101 for beginners, okay? What I think a beginner should do and how a beginner can learn how to enjoy jig fishing and some of the rewards that come with it. So, how are we gonna go about it? Small. The biggest mistake I made and I see young anglers do is they read an article and they go out and they buy a half ounce black and blue jig and they go to their local pond and they're gonna try to throw it. That works in some places, but not all places. And the key to cutting down your learning curve on the jig is to get bit. You need to get bit. The more you get bit, the easier it is for you to get confidence in the bait so you can throw it more. So we are gonna be learning with two jigs, okay? Now, the ones I like is the Bitsy Flip, from Striking, and the Shroom Micro Jig from Z-Man. Tom, why are we going so small? You get bit. You can take these two jigs, you can go to your local creek, you can go to your local pond, it doesn't matter where, and you will catch bass, bluegill, crappie, you'll catch anything. And the bite is, is a lot the same as that big half ounce black and blue jig. So we're able to cut down that learning curve because you have a higher probability on a smaller jig like the Z-Man or like the Bitsy, the Bitsy Bite from Strike King to get bit. And the more you get bit, the easier it'll be to learn it and get confidence so you can go to a bigger bait. So with that said, what's the tackle like? What I prefer to have, I will use a bait, uh, spinning reel combo. This right here is a caching rod. This is their medium heavy one, okay? And this is the seven footer. And again, with all the videos, I'm gonna link everything in the description below. I'm gonna use 20 pound Sunline braid or whatever braid you prefer, 20 pound. And then I'm gonna pair that with 16 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Again, this also depends on where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing a small creek, I will cut my fluorocarbon leader down to more like 12 pound uh, test. With this combo, I have maximum sensitivity and I have maximum castability with this smaller bait. But I still have the backbone because I have gotten up to four pound largemouth with this thing. And if you're fishing smallmouth water, dude, you can catch some big ones on these type of jigs. So we can have the ability to move this bait very great distances with our casting. We have the ability to feel very well with this. And this is the same combo that a lot of you guys that fish ponds and creeks, everyone has a spinning rod combo. 
This is, gives you the ability to do what I like, which is that Swiss army knife that it has multiple purposes, okay? I'm gonna pair this with really two things, a rage crawl or a creature bait. Mine that I prefer for this is the Damiki, the Damiki crawl with these little air fins. And so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bite it down some, and I'm gonna thread that on there. Um, Cause the key is you want a very compact package and you don't even have to use these. If you want other things that work good is a, just a Ned rig uh, by either like, I like uh, Robo Worm, um, the Maxent, I can't wait to get that. Or just the boring old Z-Man one, the, the, tr the tried and true. But either way, you wanna create this very compact package right there. Now, we got that set up. How do we fish this thing? The beautiful thing about a jig and why a jig is personally my favorite thing to throw is that Swiss Army knife. It's that ability that I can have one rod and I can do two things with it. There are two techniques you're gonna use with this. The number one, is a slow swim. You're gonna treat this like a swim jig or a spinner bait or a swim bait, any of those. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cast it out and you're gonna wait until you feel contact with something and you're gonna keep that pace. So if you have to go really slow just to be able to nick the cover, great. If you have to speed it up a little bit, that's fine. Find that cadence to where you're in contact with something. And that's what makes this so great is I can fish this like those horizontal presentations, but then, if I get up to a beaver dam, some stumps, some grass, something like that, I can cast that there and I can milk it. And that's where the tried and true, I think, jig technique comes in. And this is hard and it takes some time to have the patience. But what you're gonna do, tried and true presentation is you cast it out there and you're gonna let that thing hit bottom, okay? And when it hits bottom, you're gonna put semi slack in your line and you're just gonna shake the line, okay? I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just shaking my rod tip with some slack line, and then I'm going to try to count every rock, everything. I'm gonna just slowly drag it until I feel something and I stop. Shake it a little bit, and then slowly creep it. I wanna pretend that I do not want to get bit. I wanna sneak it past them. I wanna look like something on the bottom that's terrified for its life. And then, when you get bit, generally speaking, it's gonna feel like two things. You're gonna feel nothing. And what I mean by that is it just gets light all of a sudden. And this is where I think people get into some trouble. Do not slack line. Slack line hook set means you drop your rod tip and then on slack line, you snap it. A lot of times that's when you're going to break off. You can do that if you are using like super heavy tackle. I'm talking 25 pound fluorocarbon, you know, 80 pound braid, like crazy stuff. Yeah, you could probably get away with it, but you're also going to be breaking off a lot. All you're gonna do is from that position you have the rod is you're gonna reel tight and pull back hard, set the hook hard, just like that. That's all you need to do. Number two, this is also important. And this is my personal preference, by the way. Move it until you feel it. What I mean is, and I see this a lot with kids, the, tri the, the, the correct way to fish a jig is when something feels different, you whack it. Okay, that's just, that's usually how you do it. The problem is that comes with the experience of knowing when I lift that up, it just, that feeling is different. And so since we're fishing such a small presentation that allows us to catch almost anything from bluegill, crappie, bass, anything, I want you to, I want you to reel tight with the rod tip and I want you to try to feel it. That's how you're gonna learn what a bite was and what wasn't. So what I will do is I'll cast it out there and if I'm not sure what it is, I'm just gonna pull tight and hold it for a second, just try to give it a feel. Are you gonna lose bites? Yes, you will lose bites 100%, but you're going to learn. Ask yourself, was that a bite? Pull tight and hold for a second. If it moves, if it feels off, yeah, that was a fish, good. You're learning what it feels like. Because again, with this smaller thing, you're gonna have more bites and you're gonna have that opportunity to learn what the feel is like. Number two, the frustration factor. When I was learning how to throw the jig, it was the same thing. This is how you do it. Try not to slack line, come tight. If it feels weird, whack them, great. I lost tons of jigs. I got completely frustrated because you, you throw into some, some of the gnarliest garbage there. And if it feels weird, I'm whacking. And guess what? 
I'm breaking off all the time. And I got frustrated. What I wish I learned at the time was instead of just whacking on every single thing, feel it. If it doesn't, if it's not hundred percent a bite, fine. I'm going to lose some, but I was gaining confidence and I wasn't losing tackle. And when you're young and you don't have a lot of money, you don't want to be losing tons of jigs when you're trying to learn the technique. So my advice to you is cast it out. When you sneak it back, when you feel something weird, hold it for a second and just think like, is this a bite? And then pop it free and keep moving. Cause something else will happen too when you do this. And this is one of my biggest PRs came on this when I was younger. I was fishing um, a deep beaver dam and I was fishing it and I, I held it. And I've already lost, I think, like, I think I lost three, three jigs by that point. Cause I was just whacking when it felt weird. I was hitting, I was actually banging the stump. Well, then what I did when I cast it in there, uh, cause it was my last jig, I had no more jigs. I wasn't gonna lose this one. So I was just sneaking it back to the boat. And every time I felt like ah, it's probably a snag, it's not a fish. And so I would pop it free. As soon as I popped it free, thunk, six and a half pounder ate it. Had I not had, had I had more jigs and I just kept going with just, just breaking off left and right, because, oh, it felt different, I probably wouldn't have caught that fish. But when I changed my mindset to this is the only bait I have and I'm going to protect it, I'm just going to slowly creep it back. And then, okay, I think that's stuck, so I'm going to try to pop it free. Everything was fine. And I actually got better with the jig. So you, I, I suggest... Sneak it back to the boat. If it feels weird, use the rod tip and feel to make sure. Will you miss some bites? Absolutely. But because we're using a smaller presentation, you're going to get more bites. You're going to get more opportunities and you're going to learn the feel. And then once you believe you have a good understanding of the bite, go to the normal hook set. You feel it, just reel back and hit them hard. Then once you master this, we can go to a regular jig. Um, and there's going to be another video that really gets into that, the in-depth of that. But with these right there, again, the tiny bitsy crawl, the Z-Man shroom, um, I'm going to list all this in the item description, guys. I really hope that helped. Uh, like, comment, please let me know what videos you'd like. Until next time, be safe on the water.